Let's talk about the primary components as in a basic way that make up bass mag so that yeah. our audience so can kind of get an idea. There's three things that play into it. Basically. And again, like I said, I'm not the mathematician here. Right. <laughs> but we're looking at our lens size. Lens size? We're looking at our um, micron sensor. sensor, our sensor. Yep. And then we're looking at our resolution, yep. the resolution of the unit. All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. This is another Table Talks episode. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about a hot topic within the thermal, uh, maybe not so much the digital night vision world, uh, but definitely in the thermal world, uh, base magnification, right? Um, you start talking to people within the industry who are kind of, I don't know if we should call them gurus, but there are people who are more familiar with all the choices, not just with us, like the different products, you know, we have in our lineup and our catalog, but with, with different competitor products and everything, base mag, base mag, base mag. It's kind of a hot topic. Justin, I mean, I've been doing this, um, uh, almost two years now. Uh, and there are some things that I learned getting into this. Um, not to say that I'm like the super expert at, by any means, but, you're a little bit new, newer at this, and, and I'm, I'm sure you kind of felt the same. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Same like uh, disequilibrium, like learning, <laughs> like like oh, well, what is this? Because there's a lot of technical stuff that goes into this base mag conversation, yeah. and it's an important aspect of thermal devices that is definitely something we talk a lot about. So my question for you is just so the audience can see, what do we mean when we say base mag? Because these are not this isn't optics like day optics where you got like your your three to fifteen. You know yeah. what do we mean when we say base mag? <clears throat> yeah, it is. Um, there's some math going on here that like I still don't. I don't do the math, right? <laughs> okay. but, but what I'll say to everyone, <laughs> like th this is what I would say to everyone before going into this at all, is that like. Even if you, like you said, there's some gurus, or I'll, I'll call them mad scientists, who understand this stuff really, really well on a very technical level. And that's awesome. But if that's not you, the most important thing is that base mag is one of the key components to pay attention to when you're looking at buying a thermal. And that is because, different from a day scope, where your base mag is, that's the lowest power, power of magnification right. that it has. And then as you continue to magnify, the image that you're getting through the scope is essentially the same. It's just closer. But it, uh, your, yeah, yeah. the clarity doesn't change. Correct. Right? And and that's not the case with the thermals. With the thermals. Let me recap. So what, what do you mean? So like when, when we're talking about regular scopes, right? If I tell you this has a 2 power to 16 power magnification range and you're just looking at that and you're not familiar with how this technology works you might be thinking in the world of regular optics when you pick up a two power to 16 or whatever power scope i don't know if that's a thing but we'll say like a three to 15 yeah. right when you're on three power you're on three power you've got your field of view on three power and as you crank that dial on that scope over and you zoom in right you're just narrowing your field of view as you look closer but your image quality is not changing. Yeah, it's the right? same. You can focus, you still get a good focus, yeah. and still have good clarity. But that is optical zoom. This is digital zoom. Digital zoom. And they're very different. Correct. So, so what is digital zoom? So with a thermal no. unit, we're using a computer, and we're looking at a screen. There's a little screen in here. We're not looking straight through glass, right? So there is, there's a small screen right here, and that's what we're looking at. And when we hit the zoom button, we are it is a it is a digital zoom, and so uh, we're not like getting a closer picture. Pixels are getting bigger. Yeah, that that image on that screen that we're looking at it's just blowing up. We're yeah, we're just blowing that up. And so every time that you push the digital zoom, we are losing some of our resolution. We're losing some of our clarity. We're losing some of our detail yeah. every time we zoom. To, so to clarify. If you have like, this is a 25 millimeter, 384 resolution monocular, right? When I touch the zoom button, it doesn't change the resolution of the unit. 
it changes how that resolution is displayed on the screen. Yeah. What that means is like, if I have an image that is, you know, I got my full aspect ratio and I'm looking at that screen, the little OLED screen in here, um, and I zoom in, all I'm doing is blowing up that image and, and, and basically making the pixels and everything bigger, right? So when I'm, when I'm doing that, I'm not, I mean, a, a simple way to think about it is you're losing image quality. So, and, and when you do that, they usually function with most thermal optics by like doubling. So if you have like a base magnification of two power, when you hit the button one time to zoom, you have zoomed into 4X. Well, when you've done that, you've taken your 384 resolution image and cut it in half when you've zoomed in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so the reason that this comes into play is because depending on how far out you're going to be like shooting at targets, uh, if you're starting at a low base magnification, which for certain things is really nice. Yeah. You have a much wider field of view. Yeah. So that's really nice to have if you're, if, if we're looking at like a, uh, like a wide field, a big open field, yeah. we want to see as much of it as possible because we want to find where the hogs are, where the movement is, coyotes, whatever. Um, starting at a lower base mag, that's great for field of view. Uh, but as soon as we... As soon as you're as, like, hey, what's that what's over that there? Thing? And you hit that zoom button. Then we, yeah, then we technically go from like a 640 image to like a 384 image. Basically, uh, 320. You, you're cutting yeah. your resolution in half every time you push the button. Yeah, and, and then if, if we need to push it again, then we're losing even more clarity. Correct. So the question becomes... Given the the type of game that you're hunting, the type of hunting you're going to be doing, what's kind of your your average like distance you're going to be shooting at? The question yeah. becomes, you know, do you want to start at a 1.5, 2x, or do you want to start at like a four times base mag? Yeah, and why that matters is because there's we'll talk about that in a second, but there are some key components within thermal optics that affect base mag. So like a one to one ratio, you've got your 35, this is your 384, this is your 640. They're not going to have the same base mag because of how the internal components, which we'll talk about, are made up. So there's always some difference. So when you're when you're trying to select between a couple models, look at the base mag to put kind of that in case. We were just barely on a kind of a lifestyle thing we did with uh, Fab Rats. Go check them out. Fab Rats, cool YouTube channel. They do some off-road stuff. They hit us up. They wanted to do some things, and then and then we did a we did a night hunt with the guy. We're out there, and I was running uh, a fifty three eighty four Adder on the rifle that I had. Right, and we're out there. We're scanning. We're looking for coyotes and things. And what I noticed real quickly in the area we were, because we were coyote hunting, is that we were hearing we were hearing coyotes like. 800 way far so if we thought we saw a signature it was way out there and if we were going to call something in we would maybe see movement way out there before it came in or around it, over some hills and in the sagebrush or whatever right so like i found myself using the 5384 or the 5640 adder right and always for the most part zooming it in at least one time now when i did that I'm now looking at a basically a 384 resolution image because I've cut my 640 resolution in half because I've blown it up. But I did that to gain a four power base mag instead of a two power base mag. I found that I wanted to at least be on four power so that I could see way out there. Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of hit me later. Interesting fact is that the 384 model of the Adder that is a 50 millimeter has pretty much that base mag to start. So it starts at four power with a 384 resolution image. So essentially, if I take my 640 unit, zoom it in once, or my 384 unit, and don't zoom it in at all, my picture is nearly identical. Very similar. But my cost difference between the two is substantial, right? So why that matters to you, it, you gotta weigh whether or not you're the kind of person who utilizes the full field of view that you're going to take advantage of mm -hmm. at a given base mag. Yeah, because there definitely are situations or there's people who hunt that, that like starting at that four power is going to be maybe a little annoying. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's up close. Yeah, there's there's a reason a lot of hog guys prefer like the Rattlers mm -hmm. because their, their base mag is so low. Well, when you're hunting hogs 50 yards away and there's a pack of them, right, in a field, whatever that is, what is that? What is a group of pigs called? 
a sounder or something? Spray, I guess. I don't No, no, there's a name for it. It's like <laughs> herd of cow. Drop a comment. I'm an idiot when it comes to pig language. But anyway, um, you got a group of uh, a hogs in the field. When, when, when I've done it, you get pretty close. You can get pretty often, you can get between 150 yards. And when you've got a group of them, just go out there and look at some videos. You take a shot and your firing line, like, it's war zone, man. Like everyone's shooting and they are scattering. Them well, scatter. if I'm punched in at four power, six power, and I'm only 50 yards away, that means like it's having a hard time tracking. Yeah, they right? can scatter. I want that field. wide field Boy. of view. I'm not looking at hogs out in the field 400 yards away and taking shots because that's just not how you do it. Whereas if you're a coyote guy, maybe you want that higher base, Mac. No disrespect to any of you guys that are out there killing hogs at 400 yards. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Props to you. <laughs> Let's talk about the primary components as in a basic way that make up base mag so that yeah. our audience so can kind of get an idea. There's three things that play into it. Basically. And again, like I said, I'm not the mathematician. Here. Right. <laughs> but we're looking at our lens size. Lens size? We're looking at our um, micron sensor. sensor, our sensor. Yep. And then we're looking at our resolution, yep. the resolution of the unit. Those three things are like a triangle, if you will. There's right? a relationship between those three that determines yep. our base. Mag. As you change one of those, it will affect your base mag. So if you have a given unit and you have an identical unit, and then on one of the units, like let's say you have 35, 384, 12 micron. 35, 384, 12 micron. We'll just, we'll just pretend these are the same, right? And then on one of them we say, but we're gonna come out with this unit, but we're only gonna change the lens size. That will affect base mag. When you go up in your lens size, your base mag goes down, right? Micron, let's say you got this one and this one and you want two identical models, but one of them, you're going to increase your micron, the sensor size. As you increase the sensor size, your base mag goes down, right? So as sensors get smaller and better, base mag is getting higher. That's just the trend in the industry right now, right? So that's why, that's kind of what goes into the product development side. When we're coming out with various products, we need to think about who's using this and what kind of field of view are they going to be looking for, right? Like the Voyage, massive, the Voyage LRF, our new handheld bino. Massive, yeah, lens. 75 millimeter, 640, and, and 50 millimeter, 384 option. Like your base mag is insane. But that's for the purpose that it was built, to see things really, really far. If you're trying to use that as a spotter for stuff that's 50 yards and in, that's the wrong tool. It's just simple as that, mm -hmm. right? And then the last thing, what was it? Resolution. As resolution goes up, base mag goes down. So if you have a 384 and a 640 and everything else is identical, the 640 will have a lower base mag than your 384. So... I mean, just to kind of recap here, again, this is not the, this is not like the most, most technical explanation of all this. Right. But the most important thing is that this is something to be aware of when you're looking to purchase a thermal scope or handheld. And the kind of hunting that you're going to be doing most is, is going to determine probably like a lot of what you want and the right. capability that you want. You don't want to find yourself being someone who wants to pick up something like this, like our Sting IR in front of an LPVO, which has a base mag of one. So when you're on one power, you get this really massive field of view and like use it primarily for hunting high coyotes at 400 yards. Good luck. Cause like you'll have a crystal clear image at one power, but then you've got to, you've got to, Ruin your resolution four times to get it four power. Whereas if you just picked up an adder, 34, 50, 384, you already started with with a, with a four power base mag and you have a 384 resolution image at that base mag. So like, it just depends what you're trying to do. You need to think about your, your desired field of view and how much you want to be zoomed in. And just keep in mind, if you want to take advantage of the the zoom function, you are losing image quality mm -hmm. when you do it. Yeah, losing image quality. Earlier in the video, I said losing resolution, which is like technically true. Technically, but the, yeah, in mean, a way that's true. Yeah. Image quality diminishes. Mm -hmm. But it is, it just is so, it's super important to know that like, if you're buying a day scope and you, you see that like three to 15, that's something we're always looking at at scopes. Right. Or the even like a LPVO, it's a one to ten. Right, like that means a certain thing, and it's very straightforward. Right, when you're buying a thermal scope and you see that it's like a 
two to sixteen. Yeah, one two to sixteen is not going to be equal to that some means, other two. To 16. That means a very yeah. yeah. That means a very different thing. Correct. Um, and and it is all affected by these these three things that are all going to be things for you to look at when you're deciding what thermal to pick up for your purpose. So that's base mag. Hopefully we've answered some of the questions and cleared up some confusion. If some of you guys still have questions, drop them in the comments, give us some hot takes, you know, let us know what you think. Maybe put some additional information out there for others that are still yeah, investigating any you, this. Any of you gurus or mad scientists yeah. on the topic, yeah. um, let us know your thoughts. We'll see you next time.